Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please subscribe, like and share if you deem fit. No, you're, it's not compulsory. And for those of you who are already with me, supporting me, subscribers, you know the drill. I appreciate you and thank you. Now today, this video is really for the women. So you guys can take a back seat, put your legs up and go and do watch TV or whatever it is you want to do while I talk to the women for a, a moment. Um, I got home with my phone this evening and I had about eight um, videos of Angela Bassett, the same video. It was just like coming at me from all angles. And I'm like, why am I getting this video so often? So I said, there must be something in it. So I looked at the video and I'm, I met Angela Bassett when I was in New York. She's a tiny little thing. But even in her tininess, she's such a regal woman. And we all know her as the Queen of Wakanda. So, yes, yeah, she's got that sense of regality. And so, but we, I didn't really acquaint that regalness that I see in the movies that, you know, when I saw her in real life. But anyway, putting that aside, she's won the Black Girls Rock Icon Award. And so she stands on the stage and she, as usual, she looks like a beautiful black queen, regal, well-toned, you know, articulate, eloquent. And as she spoke, I looked, the, the camera went around the audience and the women in the audience were almost in tears as she spoke. And some of them, you know, were holding their chest and in awe of everything that came out of her mouth. And I'm like, what is it? Who destroyed these women? Why do they need the validation and the endorsement? Who's turned out their lights? Because that's what I saw. Angela Bassett was giving a beautiful speech, but I looked and focused on the women in the audience. They were actually in awe. It's like they needed to hear it. They needed to hear that they were queens, that they were strong, that they would set the foundation. You know, a lot of women, they go out with men who have destroyed them. They go out with chauvinists, they go out with narcissists, they go out with bullies. And because a lot of them go out with these type of men when they're young, it, it outs their light. Women who were strong at one point become weak. And then we're constantly denigrated for being independent. Men use it as an excuse not to help us. They use it as an excuse to put us down, to make us do things, to make us pay bills, to make us, you know, pull the trolleys, to carry bags. You're independent. You can do it yourself. So, you know, a woman is caught between a rock and a hard place. Because on the one hand, she's trying to perform her feminine female duties. And on the other hand, She's put down and made to behave like a man, a survivor. She's forced to be a survivor. And then she is resented for it. And so when I saw all of these women in that auditorium, looking at awe at Angela Bassett, feeding off of her wing, feeding off of her words, and her words were giving strength to their wings. I thought to myself, these women have been destroyed. They're destroyed. They're beautiful black women in that audience. And they've been beaten down. You could see it. Because those words that Angela Bassett was telling them, they needed it. 
They needed to be endorsed. They needed to be validated. They needed to be told that they were queens, that they were beautiful, that they should stand firm in themselves. They needed those words. And I thought it was quite sad. I thought it was really sad. You know, sometimes, I mean, when I was younger, I used to um, equate myself with men who did not appreciate me, who would try to put me down at the slightest little thing. But even then, I knew what was happening. I knew what they were doing. And I would, in my head, I'd be saying, you think you're putting me down? You think you're going to get away with this? And all I was doing is letting myself know that this was not the person who I wanted to be with. I would make sure that it just wasn't a one-off or they weren't playing around. But when you see a pattern of somebody trying to put you down all the time, at every opportunity, they try to find something wrong with you, you know that's a destructive relationship. And you know it's a relationship you can probably pass time in, but it's not the type of relationship that you want to have a long term. You want to be in a relationship with somebody who loves you, somebody who appreciates you, somebody who respects you. And that doesn't mean that they have to be all lovey-dovey and all over you. But it does mean that they look at you. When they look at you, they look at you and they realise how beautiful you are. And I'm not talking about physical beauty. I'm talking about inner beauty. They see your qualities and they see what you can do for them. And they let you know. They don't make it look like it's, you know, they're the ones who have done this for you. They're the ones who give you credibility. That's not how it goes. Women, you need to know your strength. You need to know your beauty. You don't need someone telling you that you are beautiful and that you are strong and that you have done right by your decisions that you've made. Some women, because they're on their own, they feel as though, I wonder if I should have stayed with that guy. And yet they know in their hearts they shouldn't. But there's that doubt. And then in the advent of the way that relationships are these days, a lot of women just feel that they cannot tolerate the slightest abuse. Sometimes, you know, it's not that you shouldn't tolerate abuse, but sometimes you have to kind of distinguish between abuse and fear. Some of these men are afraid. And that's why they come out with these little spurts of, you know, is insecurity that's playing out. And you can either accept it or you don't accept it. But I'm just saying, you know, you can reach a stage where you are so frightened that even the slightest thing that a man says to you, you, you don't want to know. And it's about getting past that. It's about becoming less sensitive, less fragile. It's about becoming stronger. And so when people, you know, I've had, um, because I vlog, I'm sure you see some of the comments I get not very nice and I still don't look at them because I still don't feel as though I've built up enough resilience to uh, you know to actually take in what some of the nasty things that people say but you know I have to do that daily well I intend to do it daily I haven't done it yet but I have to do that daily to build up my resilience, to build up my fragility, to make me stronger. Because we go through life protecting ourselves and we need to open ourselves up to a little abuse. Because sometimes it makes us stronger when you can take it. I'm not saying if you know if you're that kind of frame of mind where you um, I'm not telling you to accept an abusive relationship, but 
when if I learn to accept all of those negative, not accept them, but look at them and not be affected by it. That is really what I'm saying. To not be affected by what people say, by the criticisms people make. You need to be at a place where you are strong enough to take criticism and not be affected by it. And that is what is important. And sometimes people come in your life to do that for you. And so if somebody challenges you, it's not about saying, oh, I don't want to be with that person because that person's challenging me and he's not respecting me and we don't know each other and he shouldn't be talking to me like that. It's more to do with what is, am I at that place where I can actually see beyond the criticism? Because sometimes we're still so fragile. Sometimes we're broken. We haven't mended. And if you enter a relationship where you haven't mended, you are going to be um, one of these women who will not be able to accept the challenges or criticisms, whether they're justified or not. Sometimes, you know, well, I watch a lot of these um, movies, you know, some of the, I love the old movies and I watch the, how men um, talk to women back then. And then I look at some modern new movies and I kind of compare the two. And the older movies, you'll find that the woman, she doesn't take no notice of what the man says. It's like water of a duck's back. She doesn't give a boot about his criticism. But then you look at the modern day relationships and the slightest little thing that a man says to a woman that she doesn't agree with it, she's up and off. So all I'm saying is about when, as a woman, we don't need anyone to endorse us as much and as beautiful as Angela Bassett is. You don't need her to strengthen you. You need to look at yourself and know your own strength. Know that the decisions you made were right for you at the time. Don't have any regrets and realize that we all make mistakes. You know, we choose based off of emotion sometimes. We choose because somebody is there to fulfill a need at a particular time. And that might be a mistake. It might be the wrong person. But you'll know in time and you don't chastise yourself because you've made a mistake. Now, I've written down some notes um, that um, I just wanted to run through to make sure that I hadn't forgotten anything. Um, I've already said that a lot of women have been beaten down by egotistical, chauvinistic and narcissistic insecure men. And their fight has been taken away. You know, some women's fight has been taken away. Um, so often we're chastised for being independent as though it's our fault. So often we are left to do things by ourselves because men begrudge doing anything for us. But yet they want to sleep with us, call us their wives and take the credit for our journey and our achievements. We shouldn't need Angela Bassett to strengthen our wings. We should... We should know within ourselves what we're capable of becoming and being. We should stand firm in our truth and know that what our gut instincts is, is right. Whatever our gut instincts is telling us, it's right. Don't doubt yourself. Sometimes you can be in a relationship where you see things that are not quite right and your gut instincts say, you know, this is not the way to go, but you go against it because sometimes it's that um, female part of you, the maternal instinct, the caring instinct, the, the forgiving nature you have. And you say, OK, you know, I don't want to be too harsh. Let me go along with it. But there are certain things that you need to be able to observe that will tell you it's unhealthy. There's there's healthy um, relationships and there's unhealthy relationships. And there's relationships that are out to destroy you and put you down. And a lot of men 
who do who have punched above their weight feel that they need to bring you down in order to bring themselves up you can have men like that in your life but you would need to know where you stand you need to know whether or not you can accept that whether you're strong enough and whether you're able to challenge that type of relationship so it's, it's very, very difficult to know, but only you can know what you are able to withstand, what you want to withstand, and what you are, you know, where you are in your growth and your level of involvement. Um, I said, Angela Bassett is regal, articulate, feisty, eloquent, beautiful, but I bet she too has her insecurities and her fears, but she wears them with pride. She wears them with integrity and she's fearless. You know, we do not know. She obviously has her challenges and has overcome her challenges. But, you know, we all know she's been there. So let her words of purpose resonate with us. What are What is your purpose? What, what do you think you were brought to this earth for? Do you think you were brought in this earth just to be a mother, just to be a wife, just to be a sibling? Or do you think there's something in you that you can offer to other people? Do you think you have some kind of gift? Start evaluating what you're good at. And don't let anybody tell you you're not good enough at it. Because whatever it is you want to do, you can hone your skills, you can develop it, and it's never too late. A lot of people are saying, oh, I'm past 50, I'm past 60, I can't do this, I can't. There's no excuse, and there's nothing worse than regret. You know, some people think I wear wigs because I have insecurities about my hair. I don't have any insecurities about my hair, but what I do like to do is recreate myself. Recreate myself, sometimes I recreate myself every week. Sometimes it's every few months. But I'm always recreating, because when I recreate myself, I have a new sense of energy. I have this kind of feeling of newness. It's like every time I see myself, I feel like a new person. I've been given a new opportunity, a new chance, a new chance, a new opportunity to be another part of who I am. I embrace every aspect of who I am and I have lots of different aspects and I'm growing as well and I'm getting stronger and more resilient and it takes time and it takes self-belief. So don't feel as though it's too late. Look at yourself in the mirror and think, you're a black girl and you rock. <laughs> um, what else did I write down? Um, don't let men take away your lifeline or your, willis or your willingness to shine. Don't let denigrating criticism make you feel less than or inadequate. Men fear our power. They always have. Some men respect our power. Some men appreciate our power. But you have men that resent our power. What power am I talking about? The power that we have to bring life into the world. Yes, it makes two, but we are the carriers. And so we have that power. Um, yeah. And, you know, when I say, you know, men fear our power, we, ha we need to teach them not to fear us and to, you know, and to compliment us. We need to, you know, because a lot of men, they, they think that, oh, if they give you a compliment, you're going to get too big for your boots or, you you know, you're going to start getting arrogant or you're going to think you're better than you are. You know, you have these men who are small minded and that's how they think. They think, oh, my God, I can't tell her she looks good. I can't tell her she's she's good at this because oh, it's going to go to her head. And then maybe she might not even want me. Maybe she thinks she'll be too good for me. So they put you down 
or they don't give you any compliments at all. But you have to know where you are, where you stand in yourself and what you're able to cope with and deal with and manage. Um, let me see. We should not choose men for men's sake, but select a partner who appreciates and respects you. We can tolerate their misgivings and, their ex and excuse their indiscretions, but never let them feel that they have conquered you. Always set your boundaries. You know, you'll have something within your boundaries that is not acceptable. You know, you know, you ha everybody has their indiscretions and stuff like that. We all say things we don't mean. Sometimes we're quite flippant. Sometimes we we can make insults and offend somebody inadvertently. But I'm talking about these people who do it all the time in a very surreptitious way. Those are the ones I'm talking about, the ones who kind of, you know, we wheedle it in slowly, slowly, slowly. And by the time you turn around, you have women who feel as though they're not good enough, who feel as though they're inadequate. And you have women like those in the audience who are thirsty for endorsement, for validation, for love, for affection. Let me see. Um, yeah, I don't think I could marry another man who did not show me love, respect and appreciation. I'd have to know that those traits were in that man. Um, and remember um, what she said, Angela Bassett, you know, she said, we're all black women who rock. We all have a purpose. And... Um, Yes. And I think I'm going to leave you with that. And I hope you found this helpful. Bye bye.